Are you looking for the best 4K TVS in your budget? Well, in today's video, we break down the top five best 4K TVS. I made this list based on their price, quality, durability, and more. To find out more information about this product, you can check out the description below and also make sure you subscribe for more reviews. Okay, so let's get started with the video. The fifth product on our list is the TCL QM8 Mini LED 4K TV. The TCL QM8 QLED TV, TCL's new top of line offering, checks all the right boxes for a flagship TV in 2023. It comes in an array of larger screen sizes up to 98 inches. You get the Google TV Smart Platform, which remains one of the most powerful and satisfying to use on the market, and it's one of the brightest sets you can buy. But the lower end of the space has been heating up so much the last couple of years that there are now a half dozen TVS that offer just as much, if not more, than the TCL QM8, and that put the QM8 in a tricky position, despite everything it gets very much right. Despite being an overall brighter TV, the TCL QM8 just doesn't match the Hisense U8K and other key metrics. It's also important to note that the Hisense can be found online for $1.10, $149.150 less than the TCL QM8. The QM8 is still a fantastic TV, and one we definitely recommend for those with a lot of ambient light in their living rooms, but it's not the sole option out there. Like most of today's TVS, the QM8 minimizes the bezel so it can maximize screen real estate. It's limited to less than an eighth inch on the top and sides and just over a half inch on the bottom. The latter is presumably to accommodate the easily visible TCL logo dead center. Beneath the logo is a physical switch for turning on or off the far field microphone and a button that raises a menu to activate standby mode, change the channel or the volume level, or switch to an input without needing the remote control. The back of the TV is all matte black, with textured vertical striping across all but a shiny oval area in the center, which is where the ultra bass subwoofer protrudes. The only other features of note here are the 300x400 Mimvesa holes you can use to mount the QM8 on the wall. Be careful when doing so, however. The set measures 569x326x17 inches and weighs 51 pounds, so you will almost certainly want help when setting it up. Another option is the included stand. It's a two-piece, wedge-shaped pedestal that requires a lot of screws and no small amount of patience to install. Four plastic pads on the bottom help protect your entertainment center, but one of those came off and got lost during our testing period, leaving the set just a little lopsided. It's hardly a big deal, but a tougher solution would be welcome. Except for the power cable connector, which is located on the left, all of the ports on the QM8 face directly out the right side of the set, making them easy to access in almost any setup configuration and both the power jack and the ports are hidden behind snap-on panels that give the rear of the TV a cleaner look. The ports include Ethernet, coaxial cable and antenna, one USB, AVIN, headset, SPDIF optical audio out, and the requisite HDMI ports. There are four of the last, with two limited to the 60HZ bandwidth of the older HDMI 2 standard, and one of these is equipped with IRC. Of the remaining two parts, one is a standard HDMI 2.1 port enabling 4K at 120Hz and the other 4K at up to 144Hz when used with games that support variable refresh rate VRR as a feature. The extra smooth motion of the higher refresh rates is nice, but it's a little disappointing that all four ports aren't capable of 4K 120Hz. With the QM8, TCL has fused a number of popular technologies in its attempt to craft a higher quality LCD picture. Mini LEDs allow for more precise control over brightness due to a higher number of potential dimming zones of up to 2300 on the 98 inch model and quantum dots that enhance contrast in color. TCL also touts its proprietary high brightness ultra direct LED backlight to crank up the brightness still further. Finally, the Ape Engine Gen 3 is supposed to analyze and improve the picture in real time, so you're always seeing it at its best. Does all of this help the QM8 turn out a good or better picture? To a degree, yes. It certainly gets bright. There was no mistaking the fine details or sharp edges of Robert Pattinson's Inkai Cowl in the Batman, even against the bleak backdrop of a decaying Gotham City. But although all those dimming zones do help amp up the black, it never gets as perfectly dark as it will with an OLED TV. 
so you're missing out on at least a few of the more startling effects of Matt Reeves's direction and Greg Fraser's cinematography. For the same reason, Denis Villeneuve's Dune loses a bit of its oomph in the shadowy interior scenes, though they and the silhouettes Villeneuve deploys amply still come across, and the arid oppressiveness is sharply amplified in the many sections set on the sands of Iraqis. More traditional-looking movies fare better, with Top Gun. Maverick's earthbound and high-flying scenes landing equally well. Heavily animated titles further trade on the added vibrancy. Everything looks good, if lacking a tad of the lushness you'd see on an OLED panel, in the intensely colorful avatar. The Way of Water, which is no surprise given the exceptionally advanced nature of its CGI, and its near-seamless blending of human and digital performers. The Super Mario Bros. Movie likewise thrives on vivid colors and sunny video game dreamscapes, and benefits from the increased highlights. The Rainbow Road scene and the final fight especially, where otherworldly glow is essential to the visual effect, were undeniably absorbing. Upscaling is easy to take for granted as something every TV excels at these days, but the QM8 falls a bit short. The 1080p version of Mission, Impossible Fallout lost a bit of definition on elements such as skin and the rock faces in the tense finale. Viewing angles are also weak, as they tend to be on LCD sets. The picture gained an increasingly grayed-out quality the farther away from the center I viewed it starting somewhat before hitting the corners. For the best experience watching the QM8, sit as close to front and center as you can. Up next in the fourth place is the LG C3 Series 65-inch OLED 4K TV. The LG OLED C3 is the latest iteration in LG's vaunted C-series of upper mid-range 4K TVS. Previous TVS in the C-series, like the LG C1 OLED and LG C2 OLED, have been acclaimed by reviewers including here at Tom's Guide, industry professionals, and everyday consumers alike for the outstanding picture quality and strong usability they offer at a still reasonable price. It's a tradition the C3 easily slots itself into. Like its predecessors the C1 and the C2, the C3 looks like a winner and comes with everything you'd want from a TV serving as your home entertainment centerpiece. Perfect blacks, thrilling contrast, and rich, accurate colors at every point across the visual spectrum. It's not markedly different from what the C2 and other TVs out there might provide an even more scintillating viewing experience depending on what you most care about from your picture, but none of that prevents the C3 from being one of the best TVs you can buy. Svelte like most modern OLED TVs, the C3 also has an unusually sleek and stylish feel. A paper-thin metal bezel surrounding the screen on all four sides is the only immediately visible front feature, though a button under the bottom center ER receiver gives you a hardware way of powering the TV on or off, switching inputs, changing channels, or adjusting the volume. The rear of the C3 screen, which measures just a hair under a quarter inch thick, is decorated with thin horizontal lines that contrast beautifully with the large central control box, the only distinguishing features of which are the LG OLED logo and the 300x200 mem VESA mounting holes for affixing your TV to the wall. The power cable extends from the bottom center section of the box, and all the other ports face out its left edge, amplifying their accessibility. It's a good selection of ports too. Ur Blaster, Coaxial Cable, RS-232C for service, SPDIF Digital Audio Out, Ethernet, 3 USB, and 4 HDMI. Notable about the latter is that they all adhere to the HDMI 2.1 standard, giving you the maximum bandwidth for watching 4K video at 120Hz or taking advantage of popular gaming features see that section below for more information. As some top-of-the-line TVs only have two HDMI 2.1 ports, this is a definite plus for current and future connectivity. Only the C3 stand should you not wish to wall mount the TV has a somewhat old-fashioned look. It's a hefty, irritating to install, V-shaped foot-thin metal in front, thick plastic in the back that elevates the set enough to slip in a soundbar below the screen, but detracts from the otherwise gleaming aesthetics. Its shape and central positioning make it unusually easy to adjust the TV on your entertainment center, but the thinner, more easily adjustable stands found on, say, Sony sets seem more forward-thinking. As LG's earlier C-Series sets have had some of the strongest picture quality we've encountered in their price range, we expected the C3 to be at least as good in delivering the goods. 
It uses an A9 AI processor Gen 6, designed exclusively for LG, to power its various tools for increasing brightness, enhancing colors, and otherwise adjusting the picture and sound based on what's on screen. And how well are the typical must-haves of OLED TVs represented here? Perfect blacks, thrilling contrast, and rich, accurate colors at every point across the visual spectrum. Let's just say we were not disappointed. It brought the fanciful, fungal world of the Super Mario Bros. Movie to vibrant life, with its crazy, psychedelic mushroom colors gloriously intact, and the intricate, excited animation was super smooth and satisfying from start to finish. Spider-Man. No Way Home, which fuses the animated and real worlds in true comic book fashion, presented with acute clarity both the gritty but colorful palette of the live-action scenes and the searing magic of the multiverse-rending special effects that are so key to the movie's plot. The third product on our list is the Samsung's 90C OLED 4K TV. The combination of quantum dots and OLED panels has been a game-changer for TVS, with the rich, precise colors and searing brightness of the former, an ideal marriage to the flawless blacks and near-infinite contrast of the latter. Though most manufacturers have explored this partnership, few have gone as far as Samsung, and even Samsung has never made as good a case for it as it has with the S90C. This is an upper mid-range set that looks like it ought to be far more expensive than it is. It plays everything about as well as it could be played provided you're using the right picture mode, which we'll get to and even manages above average sound, which itself is no small feat. Its smart interface is still aging, yes, and the remote control edges a bit too much toward minimalism, but with a picture this good, it almost doesn't matter. Even taking into consideration its minor flaws, the Samsung S90C is, is unquestionably one of the best TVS you can buy and undoubtedly the best you can buy in its price range. OLED TVS seem to get thinner every year, and the S90C is well in keeping with that trend. It measures just 1-6 inches at its thickest point, the control box located at the bottom of the rear panel, and the screen itself measures just over 1-8 in depth, or just barely more than the width of the metal bezel that surrounds the screen on the top, left, and right. At 46 5 pounds, the TV isn't heavy, but its dimensions 569 x 32 7 inches will make it challenging for most people to safely move solo, so get some help if you can. At the bottom of the screen, a wider bezel about one-third inch obscures the R emitter and a hardware button in the center that gives you one-touch access to power, channel, volume, and source functions. If you want to mount the S90C on the wall, you can use the included VESA holes 300x200 on the 55-inch and 65-inch sets or 400x300 on the 77 and 83-inch models or for placement on an entertainment center or other flat surface, the included metal stand with a squarish foot slides on easily and elevates the set about three additional inches so you can slide a sound bar underneath the screen. Whichever way you choose, the S90C looks as stylish as it does svelte. The power cable connects to a socket on the left rear of the TV and is positioned so the cable will drop down the center of the screen. There's a channel cut into the control box for routing the cable, but we had difficulty getting it to stay in there. All the other ports are located on the right. Facing out from the TV's edge are two HDMI and two USB ports. Additional ports are next to those, angled downward. Two more HDMI, SPDIF optical audio, LAN, X-Link, and the coaxial cable connector. All four HDMI ports bear the newer 2.1 standard. This means any device you connect will support up to 4K resolution at a 120Hz refresh rate. Gamers get additional benefits in the form of variable refresh rate VRR and auto low latency mode ALM, as well as refresh rates up to 144Hz when the TV is hooked up to an appropriately outfitted PC. Second on our list is the LG G3 OLED 4K TV. The LG OLED EVO G3 offers the best of all worlds. It's an OLED TV, so you get perfect blacks, infinite contrast, and intense colors, but it also boasts astonishing brightness that guarantees you won't miss out on the full impact of the thrilling HDR effects so essential to movies today. Plus, it uses LG's thoroughly refined Weibo's smart platform. It has a good remote control, and it's gorgeous to look at a true showpiece that will grace your wall as smartly and stylishly as higher-end framed artwork. 
As you'll see in Nilg G3 OLED review, it's just held back from perfection by its sound, which may be fixable, its lack of commitment to next-generation HDR color, which probably isn't, and if you'd rather place it on your entertainment center, an almost impossible to acquire stand which is just plain weird. These may be tiny missteps, but for a flagship priced around or above $3,000, they may be enough to cause you to think twice about the G3, even though, in every other way, it's unquestionably one of the best TVs you can buy. From the front, the LG G3 OLED looks both similar to and more striking than most OLED TVs. The ultra-sleek panel is ornamented only by the single-piece ER receiver and power light at the bottom center. The only other visual feature is the bezel, which because it's both incredibly slim, less than 1 16th of an inch in silver, rather than the usual black or dark grey, makes the G3 look as though it's framed with light, even when it's turned off. This is not accidental. Like Samsung the frame, the G3 is intended to be mounted on the wall, with LG's one-wall design reinforcing that in its every particular. Yes, the set is big 56, 7x32 3 inches, thin overall only 1 inch at its thickest point, with the screen constituting half of that, and heavy 61 9 pounds, but once it's in place, you won't care, because the TV has been crafted, complete with abundant channels and clips for routing cables, to turn heads as it lays flat against the wall. The good news is that the stand is absurdly easy to set up. It ships with snap-on panels for hiding the TV's cable routing features, and with an attractive, wedge-shaped appearance, its own cable routing, and tiny casters for effortlessly making minute adjustments of the screen position, it's one of the best stands we've ever used. Does it throw a wrench into LG's positioning of the G3 as a luxury product? Maybe, but if you pay this much for a TV, shouldn't you be able to set it up anywhere and any way you please with a minimum of additional hassle? Thank goodness it's more than worth the trouble you have to endure in order to get it. Three critical ports face outward from the left edge. Two HDMI, one of which is IRC and one USB. The rest coaxial cable, SPDIF audio out, Ethernet, two more HDMI, and two more USB face straight down. The G3's port selection and placement are part and parcel with its design. The power cable is permanently attached toward the center bottom, about the most convenient place. Besides the OLED panel, LG touts its Brightness Booster Max feature as the G3's main picture selling point one not available on other LG sets, claiming that it produces up to 70% brighter images than non-OLED EVO B3 models. But does it? Not having yet tested the B3, we can't say for sure, but the G3's picture is, conservatively, spectacular and much brighter than the LG C3 OLED we reviewed earlier this year. Everything we watched on it looked sumptuous. Both the high-flying action scenes and the more intimate moments of Top Gun. Maverick popped off the screen with equal power and clarity. The interiors of Denny's Villeneuve's Dune looked just as haunted as the sands of Iraqis, with shimmering depths of color and shadow visible in each. Animated movies, whether cutting-edge or more traditional, were delightful assaults on the senses. Avatar. The way of water primarily through the lush blues and greens of the Pandora land and seascapes and the Super Mario Bros. Movie by way of a full rainbow and rainbow road of glowing, hypersaturated hues. The Batman, which trades on different levels of black and piercing illumination for the creation and maintenance of its tension, came off about as exciting as it can. For that matter, the comparatively pedestrian The Big nailed it. Baking challenge on Netflix was jaw-dropping in the crispness of its visual authenticity. I may as well have been standing between Nicole Byer and Jacques Torres watching various baking horrors unfold. And if a TV can make nailed it, entries look appetizing, it has to be good. The screen definitely and literally lit up the room, and the OLED panel ensured that the screen's colors looked equally vibrant when viewed from anywhere within it. The G3 lacks support for HDR10+, but even so, this is what you want a TV to look like. Finally, the top product on our list is the Sony Bravia XRA95 LQD OLED 4K TV. The Bravia XRA95L is Sony's flagship TV, a fully tricked out QD OLED unit that serves as both the top tier offering in Sony's master series and the most advanced set the company produces. As such, it sells for a high price. $3,499 for the 65-inch model, but do you get your money's worth? In a word, yes. 
With stunning picture and sound quality, a raft of innovative and interesting features, and a few killer extras, the A95L easily deserves to play among the most stalwart of the industry's power players, and it dominates them in more than a few categories. If not for its color reproduction and brightness levels, which fall just short of what you'll see from the best sets by LG and Samsung, this would be a slam dunk choice for anyone looking to buy a high-end TV, and even these issues won't be deal breakers for everyone. Even so, if you have the money, there is no question that the A95L is one of the very best OLED TVS you can buy and one of the best TVS overall. Like most modern OLED-based TVS, the A95L is notable for both its general size 569x3028 x14 inches and its svelte profile, only about 25 inch at its thinnest point. The combination of these qualities and the set's weight 51 6 pounds means you will need some help moving and setting it up. An even thinner black metal bezel about 1 16th inch surrounds the screen on the top, left, and right, and there's a wider one on the bottom just shy of 2 thirds inch at its widest to showcase Sony's logo in the lower left and the ER emitter dead center. If you don't want to mount the A95L on the wall, using the integrated 300x300 Mimvesa holes on the back panel, which sports a handsomely designed field of squares and snap-off panels for hiding the ports see the next section, you have the option of installing the included stand. Each of the two feet screws into a corner on the set's back. For the 55 and 65 inch TVS, there are two possible installation positions one where the bottom of the screen nearly touches the supporting surface, and another where it's elevated about 3-2 inches to accommodate a soundbar. The 77-inch A95L adds a third stand position that lets you mount the feet centrally instead of on the corners, which due to the TV's speaker hardware is not possible on the smaller models. The power cable extends out the right side of the TV. All of the other ports are on the left. These include a coaxial cable connector, R and RS 232C jacks, an Ethernet port, a jack that doubles as a digital audio out, and an S-Center speaker in, the far-field microphone switch, a power button, two USB ports, two center speaker in leads, and of course HDMI ports. There are four of these, of which only two the third and fourth, the former of which is also equipped with ERIC support the HDMI 2.1 standard for taking advantage of higher bandwidth features such as 4K at 120Hz, variable refresh rate VRR, and auto low latency mode ALM. Though any number of these ports is good and a necessity for getting the most out of your gaming, both LG and Samsung max out the ports on their higher end TVS, leaving Sony's 2 looking a little paltry. Even if there aren't a ton of devices that can take advantage of HDMI 2.1, it would still be nice to have more options. By themselves, QD OLED TVS already combined two of the best worlds of current display technology. Quantum dots for vibrant colors and expanded brightness and OLED for perfect blacks and the infinite contrast they allow. In addition, Sony's cognitive processor XR enables and executes a variety of other features that the company claims further enhances picture quality. Based on my time spent with the A95L, I must declare those an unqualified success. Thanks for watching, and that's all for now. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Till next time.